Lauren here from The Thinking Closet, a DIY blog, and I'm really excited because today is my very first video tutorial. Woot woot! And in this tutorial, I'm going to be sharing my tips and tricks for using the free online photo editor, Pixlr Express. And yes, it is actually free. It's also extremely user-friendly, and it's been meeting my photo editing needs since I first discovered it this fall. So I am eager just to sort of give you guys a glimpse into how it works, and coming away from this, you should know with confidence how to add text to photos, borders, give them sort of a vintage look, and a whole lot more. So I hope that you sit back, relax, put up your feet, grab an iced coffee, and enjoy. Okay, so here we are at Pixlr's homepage, pixlr.com, and you have three different options for which editor you would like to use. Playful tends to be too simple for me. Advanced is a little too advanced. It's a little bit more like Photoshop was a few years ago. And Express, the efficient version, is just right. So if I click through here, it'll take me to their main menu with five different options. Now the two options I use the most are collage and browse for single photos. So let me quickly show you how to create a photo collage in Pixlr. The bottom left here we have our layout options. Everything from huge and complex collages to very simple collages of even just two photos. Now if I want to um, add photos, I would click on this square and it'll kind of give me a plus sign, grab a picture from my computer, I can drag it to orient it however I want. Um, and a really nice thing about, about the collage tools, it has a paintbrush option, which allows you to edit the photos individually. So I click that button, and then I can jump in here, adjust brightness, and add text, which I will show you how to do in a moment. When I'm done with that editing, I click Save, orient it again how I want it, and those edits will be reflected in the collage, which is great. Um, I can then change the color of my border. Let's say we want pink. And then I can increase the thickness of that border if I want. I can make it a little bit rounded. And really fun and easy to use. So that's sort of the quick and dirty of how to use Pixlr's collage function. Now, individual photos are accessed through Browse, and here's my mason jar photo, which I'll grab. Now, sometimes I do preliminary editing in iPhoto. However, this photo has had nothing edited. So here's how I would approach it. First, I would jump down to the Adjustment button, click that. I like to crop my images first. If you click here on one-to-one, -one, that'll give you a square. A ratio of one to one, which is great for craft gawker and Instagram. Um, another other options nearby, but I'm going to click on X Y, which allows me to just edit and crop however I want. So I'm going to take a little bit off the left, a little bit off the top. Resize will allow me to change the pixels. So I have been standardizing all my photo widths to 750. Um, it speeds up your blog loading time if you don't have huge photos. So that's where you can adjust pixels. Next, I might try the auto fix just to see what it does. Sometimes I like it. In this case, I don't. Made it the colors look a little funny. So I'm going to click undo. And next, I'll play around with the vibrance, which is another word for saturation. If I increase the saturation, it gets warmer in tone and the colors are a little bit more bold. In this case, I'm going to mute the colors a bit because I'm going to add a filter later on. And I kind of like how it looks a little bit faded, like a vintage photograph. And next up, I will click on the contrast tool. This will allow me to brighten up my image a bit, make it darker if I want. In this case, I will add some light. <clears throat> and I will increase the contrast a bit. It just makes the darker a bit more dark and the lights a bit more light. Click apply. And one more tool that's really fun I wanted to show you guys in adjustment is focal blur. So when I click focal blur I end up with this sort of bullseye and if I drag the center of that bullseye down whatever is in that inner circle is 
crisp and in focus. The second circle is a little bit less focused, and then the outer edge is, is very blurry. So that's just a fun effect you can do. You can boost the color with this tool and the glow. But I sort of just like the blur. <laughs> okay, now jumping over to effects. This is what I tend to, to do next. Um, these are the filters that you can add to your photos to give it a vintage look, black and white, some creative options here that are really fun to play with. Um, I, my favorite is the subtle tool. And I tend to use Adrian a lot, and I love Santa. And in this case, I really love what Santa's doing. You have this dial here on the bottom that you can increase the intensity of the filter or decrease it. So here would be the image without any filter. And then I can increase, say I like about 67, click apply, and then there's my photo. Next up, um, I'll show you quickly what overlay presents you with, but I'm not going to use an overlay right now. Overlays look like this. You can add like a burst of a sunbeam to your photo, decrease the intensity, you can add a bokeh effect, which is fun. You can add fireworks, you can add leaks, um, all sorts of fun things. But for this particular image, I'm going to skip the overlay option and jump right to border. I tend to use the squared border and the rounded corner border the most. And I'm going to use this fine black rounded corner border. And I like the way it looks, so I'll click apply. And then I'm going to add some text to this photo. Now there's two ways of going about that. One, um, if I jump here to retro fonts, BP script, I can just type my text and I'm going to just jump this one down to the second line and I can just add that atop my image because the background's a little darker there, the white looks great, click apply and I'm done. Now let's say I didn't like that and I wanted to maybe add a ribbon or a label behind it. Um, first of all, if you want to make changes, up here at the top you have the undo and the redo option. Now this will only take you back to the previous step. So let's say I liked the text but I wanted to get rid of the border. I'd have to get rid of the text first and then the border. So that's something to be aware of. Um, thankfully, Pixlr is really quick and easy to use. It shouldn't take you long to redo the text if that was the case. But um, in terms of adding labels and borders, they do not have an option yet in Pixlr for that, but I have come up with a workaround. If you go back to Adjustment and you click Add Image, this will take you um, to your files where you can browse and pull up a PNG file, which is a transparent background file. And here's a ribbon that I've found online for free. And I can add that ribbon as sort of a label to my photo. So it is possible to do those in Pixlr. Now I know PicMonkey has a few labels and ribbons built in. Um, so this is, this is one downside to the program, but um, I, still, I still prefer Pixlr. And so then I would jump over to Retro, grab my text again. This time I'm gonna change the color to black. And then resize that text, that just fits. Click apply. And now if I wanted to add a watermark, sort of a faded logo or brand name, that's really easy to do as well. I've been watermarking my photos just so they don't get lost in Pinterest land. And I've just been using Mido as my font of choice. Just started using that and never stopped. And so I'll size it first in white or black. And then jumping over here, this far right dial is for transparency. So this will make it more or less transparent. And just want it sort of faded in the background there. Nothing that's sort of jumping out at you and distracting from the image. I'll click apply. And I'm done. So that is sort of a quick run through of how I might edit a photo like this. Um, if you want to jump to full screen at any time, 
you can do that. Um, you can also zoom in and zoom out up here just to show you guys how that works. So now I'm going to show you a few other tools using a different photo. So let's use this purse. And this was from my vintage purse makeover. And I had already increased the brightness in iPhoto. But you'll notice there's a slight line on this side and very faint on this side where my two pieces of foam core were touching. Now it's very easy to get rid of that in the adjustment tab under touch up. You have a variety of options here. This one would work best using spots. <clears throat> the brush size of 40 is pretty good. So I'm just going to click, click, click. And those that line will just disappear. There's also a little price tag I'll get rid of. And click, click, click. So I've grown to really love that touch-up tool for blemishes or flyaways, things you just that are tiny enough that you can get rid of. Now there is a tiny bit left here it couldn't grab. So I'm going to use this doodle tool and make sure it's on a real pure white. And then I can just use that white doodle brush to get rid of any remnants. Um, the doodle tool is great as well for um, maybe if you wanted to do a hand-drawn arrow just to show you what that would look like. I've used this before. Um, and if you want a little bit more of a professional look to that, um, cancel that, then you can go back to add image, you can grab a PNG file of an arrow. I use the screen arrow a lot in my silhouette tutorials. And there you have it. Um, let me also show you guys how to use the stickers. So they have a variety of sort of animated graphics that you can use. I really like the Whimsy graphics, Antiquarian, and the comic graphics. I love personifying my creations giving them a voice. So if I were to add this speech bubble to my purse, um, and then I can just jump over here and add some handwritten comic book looking font. And let's just say I wanted my purse to thank you guys for watching this video. I can do that change it to black, change the size, and fix the centering a bit, and click apply, and I'm done. So that is sort of that. And when I'm finished with a photo and really happy with it, then I can jump up here, click save. You have a dial here to increase the quality of the photo, make it as big as possible, or if you have a specific requirement, like you need a photo under 200, you could use this. Um, click Save, and you're done. So there you have it. I hope this was a useful tutorial and that you guys are really excited about using Pixlr. Um, I'm excited for you. And if you have any questions that I didn't answer, please feel free to write them in the comments below, and I will do my best to help you out. Happy photo editing. Farewell. A little quirky, a little strange, and I like to smile.